Welcome to the tutorial series of TIFF to Blender version released with version 1. In this series, uh, we'll see how to load microscopy data into Blender and make beautiful videos with this. Because Blender is open source software that is used for making movies and games and all kinds of animation. And with TIFF to Blender, we can load in our scientific microscopy data and use all of the features of our animation software, of this bigger animation software, to make um, presentation level videos in free and open source software with granular control over visualization and annotation and all of these kinds of tools that are, that are hard to support for specifically scientific software. For the fluorescence imaging, we're going to be working towards this video which is C. elegans meiosis data, where we see chromosomes or proteins holding chromosomes moving through time. And here, I, uh, and it is rendered in 3D with a perspective camera, where we have annotations of the number of seconds and the size of our perspective grid. Uh, in the actual scene, we have label masks in the scene uh, together with um, our volumetric two-channel data. So these are the kinds of features that are all available in Blender is to combine all of these different things and to make these very editable and very diverse uh, renders in the end. So here we're going to, for the fluorescence, we'll see how to combine all of these things, multi-channel, label mask, and time with annotations. Then for the FIPSUM data, I have this uh, dinoflagellate stack from Karel Mokar, um, where we'll see how to just how to render these uh, EM-like volumes, how to show these um, annotations that are in there, how to animate the slicing, and how to animate the um, the camera to show all of these beautiful movements um, and how to handle these multiples of segmentation masks. So even if you're, um, if you're working on fluorescence imaging, but you would rather look at how to do all these camera movements and slicing, this might be more useful to go to the EM video. And similarly, if you want to see more of the annotation parts and stuff like that, it might be more relevant to go to the uh, fluorescence video. So let's see how to get this going. For this, we need both Blender 4.1. So this is on the download page of blender.org. You can download Blender 4.1. And we need TIFF to Blender. And so both of these links will be in the description as well. TIFF to Blender is a GitHub repository where we can find here under releases we can take the newest release and we need the appropriate Blender version for this. Here we are in the general Blender interface. And I'll first go over how to um, navigate Blender. And then in the next video, we'll show, I'll show how to install TIFF to Blender and then also how, to, how the interface of this works. So we get this generic opening screen, we can either press general or press out of this, and then we'll get our standard file. Our standard file is a cube with a camera and a light. So we can select these by clicking on them in our scene. So this is the scene which contains all of our different objects. And this window is called the viewport because it is showing us our scene. We can rotate around this by I use a trackpad, so I use a two finger uh, uh, drag, but with a, you can also use a three button mouse. And this is actually here in the bottom. You will see which button on your mouse will do which action. Then this viewport has different rendering modes, which are relevant, which are over here. So we have a wireframe shading, which will show us all the points and edges of our mesh. So here our cube is a mesh, um, that which is points connected by edges 
which are then in turn connected with faces. Um, and we can visualize the faces when we go to the solid shading. Then we have a material preview shading where we have a fast rendering mode, but it still shows us all the details of the materials applied to the cube. And we have a full rendered mode. So this will actually take everything that will go into our scene and show it as it is. We then also for this, we can select our things as well in our rightmost window. So here, this also lists all the objects in our scene and we can also select them from there. Then the last relevant window, the last very relevant window is this window, the outliner window, the um, properties window. Um, here, these top things from render, output, view layer, scene, world and collection these are all generic things that will always show up that are about the world so here we can change for example in the render we can change the standard renderer which is an OpenGL renderer which is sort of relatively fast calculations to a ray tracing renderer that actually simulates light in our scene then we have output where we can change our resolution and things like this and we have our scene and in our scene will eventually be our TIFF to Blender window after we install this. This will be in the next video. Um, and we have world where we can also change the background color of our world. Then everything below here from object down to material is all dependent on which object is currently selected. So we'll also see that if we select the camera, we have different listed icons there. Properties, this one is always there, which is where something is in the scene. So we can shift things by dragging here. However, we can also shift something by pressing G and then moving around in the scene. The uh, green mouse icon is an add-on that I use to kind of make it clearer what I press. So we can also do G and then if we press X, we're bound to the X axis. If I press G and Y, we're bound to the Y axis. And this also works for Z. Similarly, we have this for rotation with R, which we can also bind to a single axis and for scale with S. So you can do this to any object, essentially. Then for any mesh object, so anything that is not a camera or light, we have a material. So the material is everything that defines how it's interacting with light, how it's being rendered in the scene. So here, for example, we have a color that is applied to this and how rough the surface seems, how transparent it is. And so there's a bunch of different things that you can play with here to change how exactly it's being rendered. And then there are here modifiers and modifiers are with TIFF to Blender sometimes already by default applied to your objects. Um, and then there will be check marks here to edit them, but you can also add a new modifier to your things, which is, for example, these the, all the modifiers change your um, how the mesh exists in the space. So, for example, if you add an array modifier, you can duplicate your object. We don't really need that right now. So that's the standard view in our layout panel where, oh yeah, the last part here is that we also have a timeline where we can change which point in time we are. Um, and with our timeline, what's useful to know is that we can set a keyframe. A keyframe is a single frame in time where we define certain values. And if we then redefine those for a different keyframe in the future, Blender will interpolate those values. So if we take here at 
value two, and we want our cube to be in this position. We can hover over our position and press I. So we now have this as a keyframe set. And if we go later and set our cube higher and press we'll hover over the Z position and say I again, we set a new keyframe. And then between zero and 40, we'll be interpolating this uh, position. So this is all the parts that are immediately visible on load in the layout screen. However, there are, so here is the layout screen and there's multiple other screens that you could use. So one that we'll not use a lot, but that is useful to know about is that there is a scripting module where you can make your own Python scripts and have them interact with your Blender C. But the two that are relevant is the fact that we have a shading tab, which opens in the material preview, but it also works in our full thing, where we can find, because we have our cube selected, the material of our cube. So we see again, everything that we had here. We also get in our, um, in our shading tab. However, what we have the possibility here is to add a new node. So we can, for example, um, add a brightness and contrast to the color coming in. So right now it's taking white and applying a brightness or contrast filter. And so you can also do this with full images that you're reading out or things like this. And you have a whole list of these kinds of nodes. You can make also um, textures that are procedurally generated for this. And then if we put the brightness and contrast in here, we see a bit more clearly what this does. Then there is the geometry nodes. The geometry nodes, we need to essentially, we is a form of modifier. So if we add this, we get a geometry nodes modifier. And here we have a similar interface of these nodes that are essentially functions where we pipe information through. But now this is about the meshes. So for example, we can take scale elements as an operation between our input geometry, which is our cube, and our output geometry. So if we put this back into rendered view, because right now we're in solid view, so we're not seeing the material. If we increase the scale here, we'll see that our objects in the scene get scaled. And this can happen to a whole list of objects and you can programmatically define all of your, um, all of your geometry. So this is a very quick overview about for the UI, user interface of Blender, how to move things, how to um, edit how they're being viewed. We'll go over some of the details in the upcoming videos specifically for how to handle microscopy volumes. But I hope this gives a little bit of an overview of um, how to navigate this program. In the next video, which will be uh, a relatively short video, we'll go over the tip to Blender install. And this is mostly a separate video because then I can later change this out if the install instructions change.